हाय गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू गैज आर डूइंग वेल तो आज मैं शेयर करूंगा आप सभी के साथ बुक लिस्ट फॉर यू पी द अल्टीमेट बुक लिस्ट फॉर यू पी विच इज़ गोइंग टू हैव ऑल द पॉसिबल बुक्स दैट यू कैन पोटेंशियली रिफर टू फॉर स्टार्टिंग फॉर यू पी इस बुक लिस्ट में मैंने जी एस वाइज डिविजन क्या है जी एस वन टू थ्री फोर और उसके साथ आई एम गोइंग टू ऑल्सो टेल यू वेरियस यूट्यूब सोर्सेज वेरियस अदर थिंग्स दैट यू कैन रिफर टू लाइक रिपोर्ट्स एट्सेट्रा वाइल यू स्टडिंग फॉर यू पी एस सी नाउ दिस इज द बुक लिस्ट दैट आई हैव स्टडीड विद आई हैव स्टडीड मोस्ट ऑफ दिस बुक्स आई हैव ऑल्सो टेकन अदर बुक्स दैट आई फाइंड वेरी यूजफुल फ्रॉम अदर टॉपर सोर्सेज इवन टूडे फॉर एग्ज़ाम इफ़ यू आर अपेयरिंग फॉर एग्ज़ाम इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर या टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव उसके लिए भी दिस पर्टिकुलर बुक लिस्ट इज़ वेरी वेरी यूजफुल सो आई सजेस्ट दैट यू यूज दिस बुक लिस्ट बियॉन्ड दिस इफ देर इज एनी अदर बुक दैट यू फाइंड वेरी यूजफुल यू कैन शेयर इट विद मी विद एवरी वन इन द कॉमेंट्स बट आई ऑनेस्टली डोंट बिलीव दैट बियॉन्ड दिस देर आर मैनी अदर बुक्स दैट यू नीड टू रेफर फॉर यू पी एस सी आई विल ऑल्सो पोस्ट द लिस्ट ऑफ दिस बुक्स बिलो इन द लिंक Uh, so that you can uh, go ahead and refer to this particular list for your own purposes and any other links that are necessary okay so let's go ahead and dive right into it we will start with gs1 now for gs1 the first thing the first subject that comes to mind is obviously history i would not suggest you studying history right away as the first subject i would study it later but it is a very important subject it is important not because only questions are coming from history it is also important because it helps you to form context it helps you to also form linkages with other other subjects and develop a curious a more critical mind because with history you can always provide references you can always uh, have a better analysis of things that are happening all right so in history there are three मेजर हिस्ट्री सब्जेक्ट्स दैट यू हैव टू स्टडी यू हैव टू स्टडी एंशियंट हिस्ट्री फिर आपके उसके बाद मेडिवल हिस्ट्री एंड देन फाइनली मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री एंड इन मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री यू हैव टू स्टडी इंडियाज फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल एंड इंडियाज इंडिया आफ्टर द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इंडियाज हिस्ट्री आफ्टर द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल सो इन एंशियंट हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन टू द वर्ल्ड द वर्ल्ड एंशियंट हिस्ट्री इज नॉट कवर्ड बाई यू पी एस सी सिलेबस तो सो द एंशियंट हिस्ट्री वी हैव द इंडियन एंशियंट हिस्ट्री फॉर विच एन सी आर टी ओल्ड एन सी आर टी एंशियंट इंडिया बाई आर एस शर्मा विच इज़ एन एन सी आर टी बुक इज ग्रेट इट इज वेरी ओल्ड बुक इट हैज़ बीन यूज बाय एन सी आर टी फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम नाउ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एन सी आर टी ओल्ड वंस एंड द न्यू वंस इज दैट ऑब्वियसली द फॉर्मेट इज डिफरेंट द वे दे आर टीचिंग यू हिस्ट्री इज डिफरेंट आई वुड सजेस्ट यू रीड बोथ सो द न्यू एन सी आर टीज कंसिस्ट ऑफ आर पास वन आर पास टू थीम्स इन हिस्ट्री वन एंड टू so these are also four books they are not very thick books exhaustive books it is always good to read them along with the other old ncert books that we are reading all right and in addition then there is new tamil nadu history textbook so tamil nadu uh, board of education it has come out with with its own history textbooks which are actually very good they are short chapters and they give you very nice history and the positive thing about them is they also cover in more details some history about central and uh, south india uh, which you can get a better look at through these books so that way your history becomes holistically very well covered so i would suggest that you go for all three because it will help you to develop a good context and it does not take that much time agar aapko lagta hai khali ncert padh ke that will be enough maybe that is enough but to be honest to get a full context of history and have a very solid foundation you need to read all these books and they are definitely doable within a very limited amount of time so ancient old ncert ancient history ke liye like i said rs sharma book medieval ke liye then there is satish chandra book for medieval india which is also an old ncert book this one is a little bit tougher because it's much more thicker it goes into a lot more details about medieval history so the way i would suggest you to read this book is aap isko overall themes padho is book mein what were the main main themes for example which were the major dynasties who was ruling india at what time what were the major any kind of economic reforms administrative reforms by these people any other technologies that were introduced during this time what were the major taxation so in administration taxation will come uh, and in addition to that any uh, major kind of events that happened during this time and if you do that much that will be enough for medieval history because not a lot of questions are coming 
and you don't want to devote so much time that you lose out on other important sections so this is for the uh, ancient and medieval history for india ncert uh, uh, new ncert books i also, also have told and covered you about the tamil nadu history bo book also i told you about now for art and culture see this is for ancient and medieval history for art and culture and modern indian history i will also tell you so for let's cover modern indian history first because obviously art and culture is kind of part of the entire history syllabus that we are covering so for modern indian history there are two parts the freedom struggle of india is one from 1857 to 1947 almost is 100 years and then after that the history of india post independence now that is very important so for that i would suggest <coughs> that you study our past two which is which has two parts part 1 and 2 which is a new ncert book for class 8th it's a very good book then there is also an old ncert book on freedom struggle of india which is very similar to the bipin chandra book india struggle for independence so i would read this book then i would read themes in indian history part 3 Uh, which is class 8 ncert uh, class sorry class 12th ncert book which is a very good book and a brief history of modern india which is spectrum publication now spectrum book or bipin chandra book these kind of questions are pointless because once you read the bipin chandra and you go to spectrum india um, book then you will be able to cover some topics that are not given in bipin chandra and you will also be able to get uh, the same content in point format so bipin chandra book is kind of you know it's written in a novel format non fiction book obviously but the spectrum publication is written in notes format and it is more fact driven so that way spectrum publication helps you for exam preparation but bipin chandra helps you to understand and create an image about their particular subject in your mind so i would study that first bipin chandra and then i would come to the spectrum india and apart from that i told you the other books also that you should read see lot of these books have overlaps i am telling you all these uh, books you will say sir ye to bahut zyada ho gaya other toppers are saying read only ncert or read only this what my approach is my approach is i want you to have a holistic understanding of subjects and for that reading couple of books about the same subjects is never harmful because usme kya hota there is already a lot of overlap so you are not putting double work you are revising so it works as a revision the only thing is if the other books telling it the same story in a different way or is adding a few new facts then it always helps you to fill the gaps in your knowledge that you have it always helps you to think understand things better that is why these books kind of complement each other and they are very good for you to uh, create or form an overall understanding of these subjects uh, now let's go to art and culture now for art and culture i would say that go for ncert books 6 to 12th uh, Uh, which are specifically dedicated to fine uh, for arts uh, except there is a book on fine arts which talks specifically about paintings so that one you can skip uh, i will give you the link of the ncert website also where you can download all these books very easily and you can find all those books so what are these books uh, ncert books history books introduction to indian art class 11th living craft traditions in, of india class 12th these are the two books and apart from that whatever the books are of history that will also help you to study art and culture so that is how i would go for studying an art and culture see ncert books 6 to 12th will definitely clarify your i have already told you that but it will entirely clarify form a good nice base foundation for you to study more and more and to have a very good understanding of the subjects then there is ccrt this is a website which you can uh, look for supplementing the sources the books that i have given to you it's very good source for that and then indian art and culture by nitin sanghania is always been uh, one of those reliable books for indian art and culture which you can study so these are very uh, uh, good sources for indian art and culture and they will be more than enough for you to uh, have complete preparation now let's move on to post independence india we have studied modern uh, in the freedom struggle the post independence india one of the great books is india after Gandhi by Ramachandra Guha you can refer to that or there is one called politics since independence politics in india since independence this is a class 12th ncert book which is also great you can refer to that or you can also go for india since independence bipin chandra one of these three is enough if you have time if you have that if you are a voracious reader who likes to read a lot you can go for couple of them or all three of them but i would say one of them is enough for studying post independence india now world history world history is one of those subjects which 
can sometimes appear a lot in the mains exam. There might be three, four questions. Sometimes there are hardly any questions from it. But you have to prepare for it. So the best way to prepare for it is go for the class 11 themes in Indian history, NCERT book. It's good. It has relevant content. And then Arjun Dev. There is a book by Arjun Dev, uh, History of the World, which is also an NCERT book. This is the old NCERT book, which is great. There are these vision IS notes. Uh, for world history, they have provided them for free on their website. You can also download those. So these three sources are more than enough. Any two of them will also do. Okay, I would say Vision IS uh, notes on world history and the Arjun Dev history book is more than enough um, for the world history part. Now, world history me kya hota hai? They are not going to ask you questions in uh, in the in the prelims. In the mains, definitely some questions can come. But for prelims, you want to study world history a little bit because it help you to make sense of international relations. Don't skip it uh, till the part, till the mains that I will study it only after clear prelims. Don't do that because it will help you with having a lot of good understanding of world IR etc. which is important for prelims as well. Now let's go to Indian society which is the second part of GS1. Remember I am still discussing GS1 paper. For Indian society NCRT books are the best and there is um, one uh, book that another book that you can uh, refer to. So these three NCRT books are class 11th and class 12th books. Sociology, Understanding Society, Indian Society, class 12th and Social Change and Development in India. And there is this one Ram Ahuja book on society, Indian society. These four books are more than enough. It will cover you every, it will give you a context of Indian sociology, how the soci sociology thought has developed in India, what are the main topics. Uh, so all those are covered in these books and you don't need anything more than that for Indian society for UPSC purposes, uh, mains as well as prelims. Now let's go to geography. Geography, I would divide in two parts, physical geography which includes world geography and Indian geography. Now Indian geography has uh, different parts like obviously the physical geography, then political geography, then it has more like resources of India. Uh, uh, the people and economy of India because economy and geography are closely linked and then for physical geography you have other parts for physical geography you have things like our environment uh, which is overall you know you're talking about the physical land uh, landforms etc how they were formed so all this is there so for physical geography you want to start with very basics class 7th our environment book is there like I told you and class 6th the earth is our habitat book is there now why I'm telling you these basic books help you form a context. See, once we graduate from college, a lot of times we have studied these technical subjects, so we have forgotten or we have lost touch with these basic things that everyone should know. So it is good to revise them, to re, uh, revisit them. So these books help with that. Then you want to come to class 11th and class 12th, Fundamentals of Physical Geography and Fundamentals of Human Geography book. Fundamentals of Physical Geography will teach you about the uh, lot of questions that come in UPSC are from physical geography about you know how uh, like volcanoes, earthquakes, how particular landforms were formed, how continents were formed etc. And human geography is about um, human migration, human population etc. So you want to study that also. And then there is Go Chiu Liang very old certificate in physical and human geography book which is good because it has really good chapters on climatology. So I would study that. And obviously, you always need an atlas when you're studying uh, any kind of geography book. Abhi aapko lag raha hoga ki I have told you so many books uh, and how will you cover all these? Trust me, once you start, once you start covering these books, you will pick up speed, your speed will improve little by little. And then you will be, once you have done one book, two books, you will be fast finishing these books quickly. And then you will realize that definitely all this is doable, very much doable. If 10,000, 15,000 other people can do it, lakhs of other people can do it, so can you. It's just about sitting down, having a little bit of inconvenience, going out of your comfort zone and doing it. All right, so don't worry about that. Now, Indian Geography, there is class 8 book resource and development, which is very good. Contemporary India 2, class 10th NCRT book is very good. Then NCRT class 11th and class 12th book are there, India Physical Environment and India People and Economy. So these four books are a must for Indian Geography, you should read them. In act, addition to that, PMF IS uh, notes are available on Geography, those are very good notes. I would refer to those notes as well because they will help you. Alright, so I think I have covered most of GS1, nothing is left over. Um, now we will move on to GS2.
Now in GS2, polity is the first subjects, then uh, governance, social justice, international relations. These are the four subjects you want to cover in GS2 uh, completely. So in polity, uh, I would suggest go with the very basics and then go to the uh, Lakshmi Kant book because Lakshmi Kant is dense, it is it has a lot of information, it will take you time to read. So democratic polity, politics is a class uh, ninth book uh, which you definitely want to read because it will give you very basic understanding of overall politics and overall how our polity is constructed. Then there is democratic polity 2 book uh, which is class 10th book very easy to read then Indian constitution at work class 12th book very good book without this never read NC, uh, never read Lakshmi Kant first read these three books then read the Lakshmi Kant Indian polity book and then my notes are also there I will post them you can refer to my notes always when you are revising don't use my notes for studying but for revising for studying use these three books now the second subject is governance in governance see uh, none of the books will really help you with governance I feel like governance is a subject that you need to study, it's more of a dynamic subject. It deals with a lot of issues that comes with uh, governing a nation. Uh, so this you cannot study purely in polity subject, but these will be more kind of uh, dynamic and um, ongoing issues like kind of constitutional amendments that are going on uh, for, for whatever different purposes, uh, whatever new Supreme Court judgments are coming any kind of reports that are, have come out. So for example, there are Niti Aayog reports, strategy for new India at 75. You want to read that because it will give you an understanding of how India is thinking about governance in this new world. Then there is three year action agenda by Niti Aayog from 18 uh, to 20. Now if there is any new updated versions to this, go for that. But this is also a very good document to understand uh, what kind of uh, information or what kind of way the government is thinking about governance overall. Then there are second ARC reports, obviously not all of them are important but some of them are very important about like administrative reforms etc. So read those. Law commission reports, very important, again you don't need to read all but those that are seemingly coming from, now you will ask how to study these reports, whatever is seeming to be relevant from the UPSC syllabus definitely read those parts. And then there are handouts by Vision IS and Insights on India, which are quite good. You can read those handouts also for governance. They will help you quite a lot. All right. Now let's go to social justice. Social justice, again, I personally feel you can use the same resources I have told you for governance. It's very similar. And in addition to that, add magazines like Yojana and Kurukshetra. That will definitely help you. So that much, that is enough for that particular subject. It is a lot of overlap is there. Now for international relations, international relations is one of the subjects which uh, I it's very interesting but obviously resources are a little difficult to find. So what I would do is there is a class 12th politics book, political science book, contemporary world politics, read that so that you understand various major issues around the world. Then there is this Rajiv Sikri book, challenges, uh, challenge and strategy, rethinking India's foreign policy, one of the classic very good book. Then apart from that you want to obviously refer to some of the uh, online sources like ORF website, uh, Observer Research, Research Foundation, then Ministry of External Affairs website and you also want to refer to channels like Amit Sen Gupta, it's a YouTube channel, very good and he talks about current affairs in a very eloquent way. So I would suggest you refer to his channel that will really help you with international relations and this will be enough for international relations. Now we have done GS2, let's go to GS3. In GS3, uh, economy is there, very important subject, almost 20-30% of questions are now in prelims are coming from economy. I would say master this subject and to master this subject you need these things. You need to study economics NCRT class 11th, understanding economic development class 10th, NCRT class 10th, you need to study Indian economic development class 11th and introductory macroeconomics class 12th. These are a must. In addition to that, one textbook, Nitin Singhania's Indian Economy is very good, that will help you. You can then after reading these NCRTs, having a basics cleared, go to the Nitin Singhania book, then you will form deeper understanding of this subject. And apart from that, you can also refer to some online sources. Kaun kaun sa online sources? Khan Academy, the American Khan Academy that is there, they have very good sources or uh, very good uh, lectures on understanding macroeconomics. Go for that. because 
that will help you to really really form a good solid base of macroeconomics because a lot of times some decent questions which you need to understand are coming apart from that do a lot of old pyqs to see whether you are able to solve these economy questions or not see economy is one of those subjects which takes a little bit of time to understand but once you understand it then from a very basic concept you can solve very difficult problems or very difficult questions also so i would suggest read all these these are going to be very important in helping you have a complete understanding of economics now ncert books are relatively easier that's why i'm always suggesting ncert books because they help you to form the foundation and on top of that then you want to read one classic text like polity lakshmikant or nitin singhania's art and culture in indian economy in order to solidify your understanding and go into the more details and then obviously channels like khan academy etc which help you to build your foundations as well okay so now ecology and environment economy is this is good economy and uh, for ecology and environment i would suggest that you study this essentials of ecology by miller this is a text no one recommends i have personally found that text studied it fantastic for upsc preparation i post the link for you you can download it and study it take out the print out or study it on your ipad or whatever but great book class 11th chemistry chapter 14th read that and 12th biology ncert read the chapters 13 14 15 16 these are important for studying environment okay i have told you specific chapters apart from that you can skip the rest of the book and then geography ncert is a very important because they also talk about uh, your ecology and environment so anyways you will read that and um, there is a book by icsc environment education standard 10th which is good for mains so you can refer to that book also later on if you have completed this on time then do for, go for it otherwise you don't have to go for it all right so this is good for environment very important subject uh, uh, apart, in addition to that there is a pmf is environment notes book which is great go for that also all right i have not written it in my word file so i will go ahead and kind of add it okay now what about science and tech science and tech is again a very dynamic subject but i want you to have a good understanding of science and tech from a very basic level so for that read the ncert books from class 6 to 10th read all the ncert books to understand basics of science because lot of these concepts are related to what is happening in scientific development so i want you to have a good hold of these so biology chemistry uh, physics study the basics study from class uh, 6 to 10th so that your basics are clear 11 12th obviously gets much uh, more technical and that is not required for upsc exam so i would go ahead and study it for those classes and there are certain other additional chapters i have mentioned it in the notes so go ahead and study it from those notes now let's go for agriculture agriculture again yojana and kurukshetra best current affairs are best from there you will get good understanding now some handouts also come insights on india and uh, vision is these two institutes come out with very high quality handouts on different subjects like world history agriculture environment whenever you have time go through them especially for these fringe subjects like agriculture because otherwise what happens is sometimes these handouts help you to create a nice structure in your mind about these subjects so i would go for that disaster and disaster management for disaster management it is best to read uh, in class uh, in ncert book like i told you they have given the information their handouts they have good like vision is handout is great for uh, studying disaster management and you can also study ndma guidelines very basic it will not take more than 3 days for you to finish complete disaster management because there are only literally 20 pages of reading that you have to do then internal security now internal security what happens is internal security again has some major topics that you want to be an expert at like nationalism like um, Yeah, any kind of internal uh, or external terrorist threats that india faces so for that uh, any kind of hand- handouts again by vision or insights on india are very good but you can also study idsa website that has good selective articles that are relevant for our internal security challenges and for external security challenges then ministry of home affairs websites publishes some things that are good so refer to that website and then there is a book by ashok kumar ips challenges to india's internal security that is a good book order that read that it will help you with this particular understanding of upsc internal security syllabus now i have told you most of the gs 1 2 3 gs 
<coughs> personally i feel for gs4 you should start with the youtube channel of michael sandel um, which who is a harvard harvard professor who has given a very good kind of course on ethics in around 15 videos which is free for everyone to access do that it will not take you more than 4 5 hours apart from that go ahead and study lexicon ethics book use that and do a lot of case studies lot of solving of case studies and lot of pyqs for ethics that will really help you uh, because in ethics really answer writing matters and how you how how well you understand various concepts of ethics that matters so that's why i'm suggesting these two sources are good enough then second arc report has also given some um, it talks about ethics in public services you go ahead and study that also that is very important all right so overall these are this is an exhaustive list of resources i have given you don't need anything more than that finally apart from that there are some good amazing sources use government ministry websites they can really help you with studying for upsc use arc reports use law commission reports selective reading use prs legislative white papers they are very very good they come out for gs2 topic specifically they can be very useful use gk today for current affairs i used to use gk today for current affairs for prelims specifically that really helped me and for current affairs apart from that you can use the vision is mains booklets in fact vision is has this section on its website uh, which is value added section okay write down value added section this value added section is fantastic it has really good sources and of high quality so for current affairs i can completely rely on that and gk today these two are very good and beyond that you don't need anything of, of course from newspaper for your current affairs needs and then there are certain channels like amit sen gupta shivin clarity by shivin khan academy the american khan academy i'm talking about they provide you lot of good uh, videos uh, amit sen gupta provides you a lot of good videos on international relations geography etc apart from these don't go for others these are the only ones that are high quality that are worth referring to that will actually be good user of time good use of your time but if you find any any other ones which are really nice let me know more than happy to explore them and share with everyone all right so today in a period of 15 minutes 20 minutes i have told you so many resources i will also uh, put them all in the comments so that you can easily access them and i hope this particular video is going to really help you in preparing for upsc because at the end of the day sources and how to study these sources is very important i have told you the sources how to study i will tell you in the next video take care thanks bye bye